welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway. Now today I'm taking you back to the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. For On This Day in Tudor History, the 12th of December 1595, Protestant Welsh soldier and author Sir Roger Williams died from a fever with his patron, Robert Devereux, Earl of Essex, at his side. He was buried at St Paul's Cathedral. William served as a soldier in the Low Countries and France and was second in command of the cavalry under Essex at Tilbury Fort in 1588. He was also the author of the 1590 A Brief Discourse of War. So let me tell you a bit more about him. Williams was born in around 1539-1540 and was the son of Sir Thomas Williams of Penrose in Monmouthshire in Wales and his wife Eleanor Vaughan. It's thought that Williams was educated at Brasenose College in Oxford before entering the service of William Herbert, 1st Earl of Pembroke, as a page. He may have accompanied Pembroke to the Low Countries in 1557 in the campaign against the French on the side of Philip of Spain, husband of Mary I, but it's not certain. It is thought that he served on the Huguenot side in the 1560s during the French Wars of Religion. In 1572, in Elizabeth I's reign, he was one of those who volunteered for service under Thomas Morgan in a revolt with the Dutch against Philip of Spain. In 1573, when Morgan returned home, Williams, who'd heard a rumour that the Huguenots were raising an army in Rhineland, travelled there, but headed home when the news turned out to be wrong. He was arrested by the Spanish while on his journey, luckily being captured by a commander who'd served with his patron Pembroke in Mary's reign. Williams, who was obviously a keen soldier, accepted the commander's offer to enlist in his regiment, serving in it until 1577. In the summer of 1577, following his return to England, Williams was employed as an intelligence gatherer by Sir Francis Walsingham. So perhaps he used his time serving under Spain to gather intelligence for Elizabeth's government. In 1578, Williams joined a regiment led by John Norris in the Netherlands. Elizabeth's ambassador, William Davison, had to intercede as the Dutch were suspicious of Williams at first due to his recent history of service under Spain. He soon proved himself by fighting a Spaniard single-handedly. Williams served Norris loyally as a lieutenant for a few years although the two men were prone to arguments. They both had fiery tempers. Williams's brother was sadly killed by the Spanish in 1582. Williams stayed on serving on the Dutch side after Norris left and became close to William of Orange. He was with the prince when Catholic Balthazar Gerard assassinated him in July 1584 and he gave chase, helping to capture Gerard. In 1585, he served with Norris once more as Lieutenant Colonel and continued his service when Robert Dudley, Earl of Leicester, took command. He got to know the Earl's stepson, Robert Devereux, second Earl of Essex at this time. Ari was just checking that I was going to get my Earls the right way around there. Williams was knighted by Leicester in October 1586 as a reward for his service. In 1587, Williams was made governor of Sluice and was there when the Duke of Parma laid siege to the town. Williams and his force resisted for nearly two months before being forced to surrender in August 1587. In late 1587, Williams fell out with the Earl of Leicester. But in 1588, at the time of the Spanish Armada's predicted invasion, he served as second in command of the cavalry to the Earl of Essex, who of course was Leicester's stepson at Tilbury Fort, and Leicester was there too. In 1589, he commanded a regiment during Norris's and Sir Francis Drake's expedition to Portugal, incurring the wrath of Queen Elizabeth I when he allowed the Earl of Essex to stow away on his ship after she'd refused to let Essex go. So angry was Elizabeth, and she could get rather angry, that Williams went into hiding for a time on his return to England. Very sensible. In 1589, Williams also served in France under Henry IV before joining the English army commanded by Peregrine Bertie. 
His service there helped him win back the Queen's favour. In 1590, his work, A Brief Discourse of War with His Opinions Concerning Some Part of Martial Discipline, yes, great title, was published. And this was followed the next year by News from Sir Roger Williams. In early 1591, even though he and his friend Essex had criticised Norris, William served under Norris as a colonel in Brittany. That summer, he served as Marshal of the Field under Essex, and after Essex was recalled in 1592, he became Commander of the Army. In 1594, Elizabeth I granted him a life pension of £300, and in that year, in 1595, he served her as special ambassador to the French king. Williams died on this day in Tudor history, the 12th of December 1595, after just four days of illness. His patron and good friend, the Earl of Essex, was by his side. In his will, he instructed for his goods to be given to the Earl of Essex. He had never married and had no children. He was buried in St Paul's Cathedral on the 23rd of December 1595, in a funeral paid for by Essex and attended by the Earl and Williams's military colleagues. In 1618, Actions of the Low Countries, Williams's account of his time in the Netherlands was published. There is a story, probably apocryphal, regarding Williams's relationship with Queen Elizabeth I, which wasn't plain sailing. Apparently, tired of his petitioning, the Queen said, Fah, Williams, I prithee be gone, thy boots stink. To which Williams replied, Tut, madam, tis my suit that stinks. Williams has been linked with William Shakespeare's Welsh soldier Flewellen in Henry V. But although Flewellen's fiery but witty personality matches that of William's personality, Flewellen was quite a conservative soldier, while Williams was a real moderniser. I'll give you a link to read Williams's A Brief Discourse of War, in case you're interested in that. Tomorrow, I'll be talking about a clergyman and lawyer who was consulted for his expertise during Henry VIII's Great Matter and who was thrown into prison for refusing to do a favour. Do make sure that you're subscribed, just click there, and that you've hit the bell so you don't miss that video. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 12th of December 1546, Henry Howard, Earl of Surrey and son of Thomas Howard, the third Duke of Norfolk, was led through the streets of London from Ely Place, where he'd been held since his arrest on the 2nd of December, to the Tower of London. It was meant to be a humiliating walk for the Earl, but it seems that the citizens of London were actually sympathetic to his plight and didn't boo him. Find out what happened on that day and also what happened to his father, who'd also been arrested, in last year's video. You'll find a link to that in the description. Thank you for joining me today. Please do give me a like and you can leave a comment if you wish. The bells are ringing out asking you to give me a like, aren't they? Take care. Bye-bye. In 1587... Harry. She does make it a bit hard to concentrate. In 1590, thank you, Ari. In, 